Let's make a sports poster composition using just one image. So let's get started dragging in our image of choice. Today we're gonna to be using this John Lithio photo from Championship Weekend 11, jumping past Ben Yad and Eric Taylor. So when you're working with just one image, it's really important that each component of the composition, like your background, your text, your player cutout, they all have to be interesting enough, right? Like you don't have enough player cutouts to really fill the space, so we kind of have to get creative. For this background, what we're gonna do is turn this image into more of a texture. And to do that, I'm gonna go up to Filter and Distort. I'm gonna distort this with the wave effect. You can copy these settings if you want. You can play with your own, but this is basically gonna create this like cool looking distorted checkerboard. I'm also gonna size this up a little bit more. And we don't really care what this looks like. We're just gonna fade this out using a gradient map. So let's put a gradient map on it and we'll set it. Uh, we'll go black to white, but then we'll change this black to like a, a super light gray. So we're gonna have this pretty white gray washed out background. And this is just more interesting than a plain white background, right? So this is one idea you can do for your background. You might get creative and you might want like a a multicolored gradient background. You might wanna just do like one bold solid color. You might wanna try something with stripes. But the point is to like do something with the background since again, we just have one player photo that we're working with. So this is kind of cool as is. We can also add a blur to the photo by going to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And maybe we'll go four pixels just to really create this sense that it's a texture. It's not super important what is happening in the background but we did create this from our initial photo. The next thing you wanna do is create a player cutout from the photo that you have. I, I did this already, I didn't feel like going through the process in this video, but I do have a video you can check out on how to cut out a player. In this case, I cut out all three of them. So a multiplayer cutout is always a little bit more interesting than a single player cutout. So just like the background, we wanna do something to our player cutout to make it a little bit more interesting. Those extra two players do help kind of round out this design and also if you pick like a good photo that is inherently going to make the poster design better. I've already done some camera raw edits to this which I have a different video on that but if you go up to filter, camera raw filter, you can go through your settings. I kind of gave it this smoothing effect by reducing the noise on the player cutout so it's kind of got this like smooth glossy look to it. I'm going to add some effects here. I'm going to add an inner glow to the cutouts. Whenever it's on like a white or very light background, I like to give my cutouts an inner glow, especially if they're in the air floating like they are. And I just have the blend mode set to overlay. It's a white inner glow. And this just kind of gives the illusion that like light is reflecting off the background at the player cutouts, just around the edges. So we'll keep it there. I'm also gonna add some motion blur. We've got these players jumping up to the middle of the design. So I'm gonna duplicate this layer by holding option and clicking and dragging down. And we don't need this effect on our motion blur layer. So let's go up to filter, blur, motion blur. And this is good, 90 degree angle, straight up and down. This distance is fine. And now we're gonna put an inverted mask on this by holding option and clicking our mask icon down there. That's gonna hide basically the entire layer. And now with our brush tool, I hit B on my keyboard for the brush. Uh, white brush is gonna paint back in the blur just on the lower parts of the player here as we want it. Next, I'm gonna mess with the player colors here. So I'm gonna go down to my adjustment layers and go to curves. And I'm gonna clip this curves layer by holding option hovering in the space between layers and clicking. And now it's just affecting our player cutouts here. And I'm just gonna kind of lift the whole thing, lift the blacks and just make it feel more like it should be on a white background rather than like a super contrasted look. So right about there looks good. I'm also gonna add some uh, saturation adjustments. So I'm gonna desaturate it again, just to make it blend a little bit more into that white background. I also don't like, it's got like a yellow hue on the skin tones. So to get rid of that, I'm gonna go to a selective color layer. Again, these are all clipped to just affecting our player cutouts. 
And yeah, we've got the yellow selected here. So I'm gonna reduce the amount of yellow and that's just gonna make their skin tones a little bit more red. We can also up the magenta. And yeah, I don't know, maybe something like this is better than what we had. And if you ever feel like an effect is too much, you can always tone down the opacity for any layer. So we can bring this down to, I don't know, 85. Not too harsh of an adjustment, but subtle enough. There's obviously other cool stuff you can do with your featured images. The point is that you're doing something to it, something different than what you just did to the background. Because again, we're working with one photo. We want the elements to look different enough. So we could have taken the hue and saturation layer, for example, desaturated the whole thing, but then just colored in uh, our main player. Like if we just wanted to highlight our main guy, obviously this was a, a rough, Example of that, but you know, graying out the opponent is one thing you can do. I'm just gonna undo that real quick. But you can do things like that. You could also maybe gray out all of the skin tones. So there's different options. Let's also create a little bit more separation from the background with our player cutout. So if we go to above our photo and then make a new layer, we can just take a soft brush of white and just click once. And then I'm gonna center this in the design, so we kind of have this gradient of white coming out from the center of the design. We can also transform it and blow it up if we want a more extreme version of that effect. I like that for our cutout, so let's move on to the text. I'm gonna make a new layer, and let's start off simple. Let's just add, I like how centered the design is right now, so let's just add the player's name to the top and the player's team name to the bottom. So we're gonna write out John Lithio, and I'm using this acumen variable font, which has so many different weights to it and different versions of it. So I'm just duplicating this layer. New York, New Empire, New York Empire. New York Empire at the bottom, John Lithio on top. And those are spaced about evenly. So you might be going for like a super minimalist design. This is not a bad start. Obviously we have some interesting motion blur going on with the cutouts in the middle. We have kind of a, a cool textured background, simple text. I like it, but I think we can do better. So let's add a new layer. Let's make some big text in the middle, just with his last name. So let's write out Lithio. We'll keep these letters close together. And I'm gonna switch this to Acumen. They've got this like ultra bold, yeah, extra condensed ultra black italic, which is kind of fun. I'm also gonna rotate this vertically and we can blow this up even further, maybe like 380. So now we've got this like big vertical text going up kind of with our player cutouts. And the important thing to note here again is just to do something interesting with the text. It doesn't have to be this exact thing. You're not always gonna have a photo of players jumping upwards but I've decided to, to kind of take the text in the motion of the cutout to kind of keep the design consistent in that sense. All sorts of things you can do with text and different text effects. We can, let's duplicate this one and put a stroke on it. And then we're just gonna make this a bigger font size. So Command T to transform and let's just blow it up and center this. So I like this effect where it's like stroked text bigger than your main text. I have a different video on text effects. So you should definitely check that out. Lots of things you can do with text. You've got text warps. If you go to T, your text tool, and then hit this T with an arc on it, you can do some cool like wavy, you know, flag shapes and really like mess with the distortion. So these are always fun if you want to play with any text effects like that. And what I like about the stroked text effect is that it just takes up a good amount of space, which brings me to my next point, is finding little filler details that you can add to your design. So things like the player number or the player signature or just their name. There are ways you can just position these elements and just add a little bit more detail to any design. So let's take his number number 54. I'm gonna make a new layer under this white spot in the middle of the design, and let's just write out 54, and let's do that five times, and let's pick a, a wider font. So we'll stick with Acumen, and they've got 
like a wide black is probably good. And we'll decrease the spacing here between lines. And I like that the, the white effect in the middle of the design is kind of making this soft gradient on our text here. So I'm gonna decrease the spacing a little bit more. And then maybe we could even spread it out a bit. Maybe we'll shrink it. We don't want it as like such a featured part, but just kind of as like a complementary element. And I'm gonna use this light gray color for it. So let's set it about there. And then to balance this out, you'll often see people using like little X's or little plus signs or dots. And that's literally just text layers that you can arrange in whatever shape you want. So I'm gonna duplicate this layer move it up here and then just type out X. Uh, let's do five X's, four rows of five X's, right? 54, let's see what I did there. Let's, uh, let's make this one a lighter font. Maybe we'll go Acumen Light. And I'm gonna shrink this down a bit. So we can just put these X's like up in this top left corner to kind of balance out our elements that we added to the bottom right. So now we've filled a good amount of our space, not too much, I still like the amount of white space we have on the edges, still keeps the background in mind. But let's just move on to our finishing touches. So first I'm gonna add this fill layer of 50% gray, and we'll go and convert that to a smart filter so we can add some noise to it. And let's use a, a hard, hard light for this blend mode and we'll bring it down to like 50. The hard light is just gonna allow it to show up more on pure white and pure black. So I also, I don't love the, the pure black that we have for John Lithio in New York Empire. So let's change that to a lighter gray also, or a, a lighter black, like a, a dark gray, I think makes sense. Yeah, that feels better. I'm gonna hide this noise layer for the time being and then creating a new layer, we'll go Command Option Shift E. That's the shortcut for flattening the image into one single layer. And then we'll do Camera Raw Filter on this layer. So let's convert it for Smart Filters. Filter, Camera Raw Filter. And now it's just an opportunity to play with the colors a little bit, play with the exposure if we need to. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it like a little bit blue tinted, maybe a little green tinted too. And then we'll add some contrast, maybe bring down the highlights. And I would just play with these settings at the end of any design really, and just see like what you can create that might look better than what you had. We'll bring down some vignetting as well to the edges. And maybe minus 20. Then we'll add our noise back and we'll leave things here. So the main takeaway is when you just have a single image to work with, make the background interesting. You can take the image itself and use it to create a texture in the background. You can play with background colors. You just want to do something to it unless you're going super minimalist. And then again, do something to your player cutout, make it stand out in the middle of the design or potentially off to the side, countered with some text. Use text effects, especially big text that fills space effectively. And then also use your filler elements like little X's, repeated text. The importance of each element is just exaggerated that much more when you only have a single photo to work with. But as you can see, it is very doable to create a poster using a single image. I think some of our best work comes from limitations like this, so I highly recommend experimenting with it and see what you come up with.